Good everyone and welcome to Apaya Puzzles. This is Jordan in editing. I thought I would just mention that I'm going to split this video into two parts. This has been made for beginners specifically, so I've gone into a lot of detail about the way the clues are working. So just to make it more bite-sized, I've split the video into two, about half an hour each. So here is part one and stay tuned afterwards for part two. G'day everyone and welcome back to Apaya Puzzles. And today, this is a beginner-friendly crossword from Liam Runnels in The Age, the 26th of March, 2024. Special welcome to any absolute beginners to cryptics. This video will be for you. And of course, special welcome to uh, new subscribers as well. Great to have you with me. Now, as I said, this is a video custom made for beginners today. So I'm gonna really elaborate as much as possible my thinking process as I try to pass these clues and come up with the answers and hopefully that will help you in your journey to understanding cryptics. Now, the thing with cryptics, if you've never done them before, you might have glanced at one or been shown one and thought, this is some sort of um, weird science. There's a, some sort of dark art to solving cryptic crossword clues. There's a little bit, but it's nothing like as mysterious as it seems. I think there might be a general impression that you need to <clears throat> engage in incredibly elaborate and figurative thinking to try to figure out some sort of hidden meaning, um, some subtle um, kind of figurative meaning of the words in clues when actually it's a lot more kind of straightforward and methodical than that and more literal than that. So hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate that today, particularly in a crossword like um, like one from Liam where it is more geared towards um, beginner to mid-level solvers. But even for difficult crosswords, most clues are fairly formulaic. Uh, they don't it's not it's not an exercise in, in dark art it is just an exercise in um, in a little bit of uh, uh, thinking um, carefully about the meanings of certain words and you'll see what I mean by all this as we go through um, so uh, I think what we're gonna do that by the way there will be a link to this in the description if you want to try yourself play along uh, you'll be able to reveal letters and words and so forth as well because the answers will be in that grid by the time you see it. Um, right now they're not because I don't know what the answers are. But um, So we'll start with eight across and I'll use eight across as an example clue to, to discuss the general idea of cryptic crossword clues and then we can go through the rest of the clues to see how the, the different styles of clues, the different types of techniques that are used and hopefully you'll see that it is not quite as mysterious as it may appear. So um, let's start with eight across and we've got limits, terrible music of the peppers. So I don't immediately know what the answer to this is, um, but there's a, there's a generic point to be made about cryptic crossword clues, just to understand generally how they work, which is that in 99% of cases, there'll be a word either at the beginning, like this limits, or at the end, like this peppers, which could just be the entire clue. You could get rid of everything else and just have, say, the word peppers, and that would be like a standard crossword clue. So you're looking for a word that means peppers, or it could be a word that means limits. Sometimes it would be something else, but it's usually the first word or the last word, 99% of the time. And when you first look at a clue, you don't immediately know which one is which, and part of the process of solving is to figure that out. Um, but the key point is that if you did establish that this was the the standard part of the clue, the, the bit that you could have on its own that would be a normal crossword clue, that is literally a definition for the final answer, just like in a normal crossword clue. So um, you could ignore the rest of it, you could just get rid of it and solve it from there. But it's helpful to know about the rest of the clue because that if you can't figure out what that word actually is, or you can't think of the right alternative word for limits, you can get there with the rest of the clue, which is what we call uh, wordplay. Uh, and wordplay is um, a more indirect way of getting to the same answer. Um, so let me just have a quick consideration of this clue for a second. And I will elaborate more carefully my thinking process with the future clues. But just with this one here, I just want to do the thinking in my head first, figure out what's going on, explain it, and then we can move on. So. <clears throat> um, Okay, so in this clue, the definition, which is the, the bit that you could just use on its own, 
is the word peppers. So we're looking for a final word that means peppers. And you could just get it from that. You could think about nine letter words that mean peppers and you might come up with something and there's probably not too many words that mean peppers. So you may, and this is actually a, I guess more of a, um, I don't know if it's Australian, British, British, um, the, the final answer here is a word that, it w well, point being, it wouldn't be used in America. Um, but the final answer we have here is capsicum, capsicums rather. So that means peppers, straightforwardly enough. So then the question is, well, what on earth does all the rest of this mean? So this is another way of getting to that same word capsicums. Let's consider this word limits. Another word for limits is caps. It's a cap on something, means there's a limit to it. So that gives us the first caps. Then we have terrible music. So terrible is telling us that this word music has been spelt incorrectly. So we need, we need to consider that it's terribly written. <laughs> um, and so we want to spell it in a new order. And we do that with I-C-U-M-S and we get caps and icons for capsicums meaning peppers. So these are just a couple of the techniques that he used in a cryptic crossword clue. Um, but hopefully that gives you an idea of the general thing that we're dealing with. It's nothing more complicated than, the, than one of the words being a definition, uh, meaning the final answer, and the rest of the words being able to be built up to come to the same word. And on the question of how we figure out which end of the clue is which, well that will become clearer as I go forward. Um, and indeed how we you know, identify these individual elements and how would I how would I get to the idea that terrible music is is going to be an anagram of music, etc. So let's uh, let's go with something we've got in place. So let's see here. So imitates eastern concrete surface with garden tools. Okay, so the first thing I'm thinking about is well, there's a few things to think about when you're looking at a clue. Um, putting aside which end of the clue is the definition. Um, within a clue, you're going to be considering words that could be abbreviated to shorter words. So for example, Eastern could abbreviate to the letter E. That comes up all the time. Um, so there's a potential E that we're going to add into our answer somehow. Um, you're going to look for words like concrete that maybe has a shorter, or this, this, in this case it was an abbreviation, Eastern went to E. But you might have a word like concrete, maybe that has a short word that or that means that means concrete, so I don't know, solid or something like that. Um, so you're looking for words that may be able to be made into shorter words. Um, you're looking for words like this surface that might indicate the selection of a particular letter or letters from a word. So it might be that concrete surface is the surface letter, the, like the top letter of concrete, giving you the C. So maybe this is E for Eastern, and then the surface letter of concrete for C, and that gives you EC, and you put this together, and you're gonna get something. So you're looking for words that kind of can be abbreviated, can be made into shorter words, um, can indicate uh, the selection of letters. There's also some things around movement of letters and placement of letters and so forth. Um, and then finally with garden tools. Um, so I think, yeah. Um, so what, so my thought just now was, well, I've got a C in the clue already. And I suggested that concrete surface may be the surface letter of concrete, which would be the C. And if that is true, that C there might be that C there. And therefore the Eastern for E might come just before it because that's where it comes in the clue. It's not always going to be that way. There'll be things about the clue that mean that you have to put letters in different positions to where they necessarily would appear in the clue. But it's not a bad place to start from, E, C. And if I've got E as the first letter in the answer, then what's imitates doing? Well, that's probably because it becomes before the E, but there's no letters before this E, Imitates is probably our definition. We probably want a word that means imitates. So we get E for Eastern, concrete surface is C, and then garden tools. So what's another word for a garden tool or garden tools? It's likely to have an S on the end. And we want a word here that would mean imitates. 
and you may come up with the answer oh, echoes so EC plus the word hose for garden tools is imitates uh, so that was a good example clue let's move on to 11 across a very short answer when you're coming to cryptics for the first time it might be useful to do some of the short answers first they're not always easier but they're on average going to be easier um, so let's see what this one is a row between two Argentinians that row could be row and this row row thing comes up a lot in cryptics um, <clears throat> right so <clears throat> I know the answer to this one, and this is a new clue type we've not seen in the two clues we've done so far. And uh, uh, let me think about how I thought about this. I think what I noticed was that I had an O in the answer, and I saw this word between, and I thought two Argentinians is, is tricky because what is, uh, how are we going to shorten the word Argentinians to anything else? It doesn't seem likely that the final answer means Argentinians with being such a short word. And I can't think of any obvious short synonyms or abbreviations of Argentinians. Maybe there's something like an A stands for Argentinians, I'm not sure. But that seemed a bit weird. Uh, and then I thought, I saw this word between, and I thought this might indicate what we call a hidden clue. Now, a hidden clue is basically the easiest kind of clue on some level, as long as you notice that that's what you're actually trying to find. Because once you do, it really is trivial. And this between word is telling us that in the middle, between all of this, in the very middle of it, there is a word spelt directly left to right, which means row. And that is O, A, and R. To or is to row. And there's a little bit of misdirection going on from Liam here where this word row, as I said, it often gets used because it's ambiguous as to whether you're saying row or row. So probably the surface meaning of this sentence, if you ignore cryptic considerations, would be to say this is a row between two Argentinians. So it's an argument. But of course, as it turns out, in the final passing of the clue, we actually need to consider this word to be row. Um, and that's completely legitimate and, and it's commonplace to, for the setter to use a word that's ambiguous in its meaning so that you, it misdirects you to be thinking about the word row, an argument and so forth, where in fact you need to interpret it differently. So let us move along to oh, 13 across. Uh, small present to mother, the first Noel, a symbol of Christmas. Okay. So immediately that I started reading this, I saw the word small and thought, okay, well, small is very commonly abbreviated to the letter S, like on the back of a shirt. And uh, we see this come up in cryptics all the time because cryptics are all about trying to find small components to put together to get to a bigger word. Now, what's useful about recognizing that small is probably meaning an S is that that's therefore part of the word play. And as I said at the beginning, the definition, the regular kind of clue, is always at the beginning or the end of the clue. So if this small is at the beginning and it's part of the wordplay, then the other end, um, let's say Christmas, or maybe something like a symbol of Christmas, that's the definition element. And so then we can start thinking about, well, one, could I think of a seven letter word that means Christmas or that means a symbol of Christmas? But two, I could also start thinking about this the rest of the clue and say well s for small i've got an s in place so that's probably that s then we have the word present and again looking for short variations on a word a short synonyms another word for present is now so if we put in now we start to think hang on this looks interesting we've got snow and we're looking for something to do with christmas so that seems uh, promising then we've got to mother, the first Noel. So what's a short word for mother? Well, a short word for mother is ma. And it should be clear now that the word we're gonna find is snowman. The first Noel is the first letter of Noel, which is an N. Snowman is a symbol of Christmas. Um, 
Now there's another piece of misdirection here because if you read this, and there's a, there's a point to be made here actually about surface readings. If you read this as a regular sentence, you understand this as a small present, as in a gift being given to one's mother, um, the first Noel, a symbol of Christmas. So this is all about Christmas and someone giving someone a present. But this present word, as I've just demonstrated, needs to be interpreted as the word present, as in right now. Um, so the point about surface readings is that very often the surface really has nothing to do with the final answer. Um, in this case, there is some relationship. Uh, we're, we're clearly talking about Christmas and we, we're getting um, snowman as the answer. So there's not, they're not completely unrelated. Um, but it's certainly nothing to do with a gift, <clears throat> which is what this sentence would otherwise be about. <clears throat> All right, so let's move on to two down. We've got a bunch of letters in place. And of course, having letters in place is very useful. Having the first letter in place is particularly useful and having consonants in place is also very useful. <clears throat> so if these were all vowels that I had in place, it would be much harder, but let's have a look. Um, a fake <clears throat> Tottenham player with liabilities. Yeah, so <clears throat> I know the answer to this, uh, and I, I think I got it just when I saw the word fake and I saw the letters that I had in place and I could think of a word immediately that, that probably meant fake. And then I looked at the rest and it takes a bit of knowledge here um, of, see sometimes with cryptics, there'll be references that you may, may be outside of your domains of knowledge. So not everyone's gonna know th what the, the Tottenham football team um, is about. Um, but if you do, then, then you're on your way to solving this clue. If you don't, Remember that you don't need to understand every part of the clue. Um, if you can understand parts of it and put them together and then kind of make a guess from the rest based on what you think the final answer is going to mean. Um, there's a little bit of cryptic ease as well here with this word liabilities. So let's have a look. Um, a Tottenham player, uh, even I, I'm not fully across this, but Tottenham, um, as far as I understand, are the top, Tottenham Hotspur or Tottenham Spur, I guess. So what I'm thinking is is spur. I thought it was Tottenham Hotspurs, but maybe. Oh, hang on. Let me just fix this so that it doesn't jump over letters. Um, we see this, and you might start to see a word emerging, which is spurious, um, which means fake. Although I guess I'm a bit a bit unsure about spurious meaning fake. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I think I'd interpret it slightly differently, but that probably makes sense. And certainly it's going to be the answer because a Tottenham player is a spur uh, and IOUs are liabilities. So if I owe you money, you could call it an IOU. So you'll see this a lot because a lot of words end in IOUs and it's very often referred to as liabilities or debts or something like that. Um, so so let's move on to another clue, three down. Dance club beside medium citadel causes irritation. So, <clears throat> um, dance club was the first thing I saw. And again, one of the key things we, we're gonna be looking for is short versions of the same thing. So is there a short word for a dance club? And of course, one of the natural ones would be a uh, disco. So if we put in disco, it's like an unusual start to a word, but you start to see, wow, this does look like a word, maybe discomfort. And then we see at the end here, irritation. Well, irritation is discomfort. So let's put that in and let's see where the rest of this came from. So dance club for disco, beside, and this is just saying it comes along next to medium citadel. So medium, like with small, often abbreviates to the letter M. So that gives us our M. And then we just need a citadel, which is a fort. Now, I would have struggled to, if you'd just given me the word citadel and say, and given and asked me for synonyms, I would have struggled to think of the word fort. But given that I had the disco in place already, and I knew the answer then must, must mean irritation, then I was able to get over the line. And if that word citadel was completely unknown to me, and yet I've been able to solve the answer based on everything else, 
I would now have learned that a citadel is a fort and that might be useful in the future. Crosswording, um, or indeed if I ever get involved in some sort of conflict. Um, so let's try four down. We've got a U there, which is a, a useful vowel. It's not um, as useless as an E or an A. Let's have a look. Spouses, switch USB and stereo <coughs> inputs. So spouses, I'm thinking Im immediately like, oh well, <laughs> uh, I think the answer is going to be this. Let's have a look. So as if you think of a word that could fit immediately, like husbands, it's worth putting it in and seeing if it, if it works out. So spouses would be our definition. Then we've got to figure out how the rest of it can make up the same thing. So switch USB and stereo inputs. So ah, now this is another one of these hidden clues. So if we can see here, H U S B A N D S is written inside that term there. And the way we know that that's what we need to do is that this word input is saying this term here has as, as a kind of input to itself. You know, how to quite, it's a little bit vague that inputs, but that's saying that there's an input here which is husbands, which are spouses. So as I said, an easy type of clue if you can realize that's what's going on. The trouble with these clues is that if you don't realize it's a hidden, you're looking for all sorts of other things, you're rearranging letters, you're finding short synonyms for things, um, and then it was there staring in the face the whole time. So let us try 16 across. Swear to smuggle cat in border checkpoint. Well, I'm not entirely sure what this is. What I think initially is, as I've said, I know the definitions are either going to be swear or checkpoint or, or border checkpoint. So these words in the middle would normally be having to serve some wordplay purpose. And smuggle is interesting because there's a common technique in cryptics where you take a word and put it inside another word. So you say, if you were to say A smuggles B, what you're saying is that this word A is going to take and put inside of itself the word B. So that leads me to believe that we need a word for swear so that this will be part of the wordplay. We'll look for a word for swear and it's going to take inside, it's going to smuggle into itself a word for cat and then border checkpoint would be the definition. So then we're looking down here, can we think of a word for cat? Well, ah, there we go. So um, a common word for cat that comes up in cryptics is Tom. So a Tom cat, that's a type of or generic word for a cat, I guess. And since I had the O in place, that looked likely. And now you start to see a potential word here in customs. And now the word swear becomes apparent, C-U-S-S, -S, cuss. So to cuss, smuggling the word Tom gives us border checkpoint, which is customs. So 16 down, play Sampras after business meeting initially. Okay, so this one came pretty quickly for me. We've got, <clears throat> basically I saw the word Sampras and thought, well, what could that possibly mean apart from something to do with the tennis player, Pete Sampras? And really what could it mean apart from the word Pete? Now it could in theory be something else and it could be part of one of these hiddens where you take a bunch of letters from the middle or something. There's other things that could do, but it's quite likely to be the word Pete. And I thought, well, if I put Pete at the end, because it's coming after something. So Pete, after business meeting initially. And so it would maybe, um, I know the answer, but I'm just trying to think of uh, making sure I'm not overlooking a way this might be interpreted differently. Business meeting initially. Yeah, so in terms of where the definition is, it's either going to be play or initially, most likely. But initially is quite often used as a literal initial letter indicator. So you want the initial letter of meeting. So if that's part of wordplay, then play is the definition. And we can see here we've almost got the complete word. And it is, in fact, compete. Now, <coughs> 
P is coming after business. So a short word for a business is a co for a company. That comes up all the time, so watch out for that. And then meeting initially is just the M from, in, from meeting, the initial letter for that. And that gives us compete. So um, 19 across. Make damp and immediately just glance down at the letters and I can think of a word that means make damp. Blokes withhold Cockney's rays. Oh, there's a few things going on here. Um, so the make damp is going to be our definition. Uh, I just got that from, from considering what word might fit in there. Uh, but if we consider the rest of the words, imagine we didn't quite know what was going on with that yet. But we go blokes. Well, blokes is obviously another word for men, and men is a short word. And we like short, short words in cryptics because um, they fit in to make bigger words. So let's imagine we had um, the word men involved somehow, and they are withholding something. So similar to smuggle, they're going to hold inside, inside the word men, there's going to be some other word. And then we have this unusual Cockney's raise, and this isn't going to make a lot of sense if you've never done a cryptic before. Uh, this is a, I guess you'd call it an accent based clue and Cockney is the most common version of this where you take <coughs> a word for raise but you say it in the way that a Cockney would and typical, one of the stereotypical kind of um, Cockney accent attributes is dropping H's off the, off, the fir, off the front of words. So we would need to find a word for raise which has a H at the start and remove that to get the word that we want or the letters that we want to put inside. Um, that might be difficult to think of, but what you can do is go, well, I know that this man is probably involved. And if all of this is part of wordplay, then make damp is going to be the definition. Or it could just be make, but probably make damp. And I say, what if I put, I've got the M for men. What if I put the N, E N at the end? And now I'm looking for four letters in here that I'm gonna get from Cockney's Rays, and then the whole thing's gonna be make damp. And just from make damp, you might realize now, uh-huh, what about moisten? And how does this oist come in? Well, to raise is to hoist, and a Cockney might say oist. So that is how that works. Now, 21 down. Barney Rubble next door. Um, that's an unusual, unusual clue. It's a it's a weird one. This so, um, and the question mark is usually suggesting that there's something a little bit more unusual happening than you'd normally see. Uh, something a bit figurative or a bit playful. The first thing that strikes me, and this, this, I can't imagine this is correct, but rubble could in theory be one of these, what we call an anagram indicator. So a word telling us that some letters need to be rearranged, like they fall into rubble. And Barney has the six letters that we would need. And Barney is an anagram of this, which is not a word as far as I know. But curiously, a neighbor is someone who lives next door. Um, so unless that's some weird spelling of neighbor, ah, no. <laughs> well, it, this is an anagram, it's just not that one. Um, so we need another word that is a rearrangement of Barney, which means next door. And I can see why the question mark is here. The answer is nearby. And next door doesn't literally mean nearby, but it kind of close enough does. Hence the question mark. Um, but it's funny that neighbor, <laughs> that's uh, quite, a, quite an unusual circumstance to have something work that neatly, uh, but be completely and obviously incorrect. Uh, so nearby. Now you might, you might ask, well, how on earth am I gonna know that rubble is an anagram indicator? Uh, now, so quick, <laughs> quick warning on, on anagrams. The indicator word for anagrams, there's a lot of latitude on what setters will use. So arguably rubble is not a very strong anagram indicator. Um, 
you know, if it says rearranged or broken, then you go, okay, this word is rearranged or broken, easy. But rubble, that's a bit more of a stretch, but you will see this kind of thing a lot and you just get used to it. And really quite often, rather than seeing the anagram indicate a word, what you're noticing is that there's, the final answer is six letters long and you have a six letter long word, which could be the word that's to be rearranged and then you just notice next to it, there's a word that vaguely might mean rearrangement. And so you start on that premise. Sometimes it's even more obvious because the word involved is, um, is complete. It, it doesn't have any obvious other meanings. So it's just an unusual string of letters that you couldn't think of anything to any abbreviations or short, short versions of it. And you go, well, maybe I just need to rearrange it. And it's got the exact number of letters that I need. So I'll, maybe rubble is the is the thing indicating that um, and we go from there <clears throat> so there's a lot of these little bits and pieces that you pick up over time around how to think about clues um, and it does just take practice I think when I first started I did the cryptic in the age like virtually every day for two two years um, and I would look at the answers in the following days to try to reverse engineer some of the answers I couldn't get um, and uh, yeah a lot of it there are there are certain abbreviations or or word plays that seem completely ridiculous when you first see them uh, but then soon enough you realize that they come up all the time and once you've seen them once you've seen them and you you know what's going on so um so let's try 27 across and, and just on that one thing i really like about cryptics and why i think they're much more interesting well at least for me than 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 a regular crossword is that you can solve answers without knowing, without ever having seen the final word. Like that, that quite out, it happens all the time, especially with difficult crosswords, that I will solve a clue and the word, the final answer is a word I've, I've either never seen before or I would have no idea what it means even though I've vaguely seen it before. But I'm able to solve it because of this wordplay stuff that's going on. Um, and I find that really, uh, really interesting. So, and that is a wrap on part one. You'll find a link to part two in the description or on my page. So hopefully I'll see you there.